Hey beautiful people, I'm Lucy and you're watching The Edit With Me Monday Show. The Edit With Me Monday Show. The Edit With Me Monday Show. I can't sing and I can't write jingles, but you know what? Edit With Me Monday needs a jingle. So if you can do either of those things, hit me up, let's make it happen, okay? Seriously, do it, hit me up. Okay, so in this week's episode, we are talking about editing black and white photos. If you've seen my other videos, you know normally I focus on a specific tool and how to use it. This week, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna go through the entire process of how I edited this photo from this to this, pop them up on the screen there so you can check them out, and I'm gonna tell you everything that I did to get there. So, let's get at it. All right, so a lot of you ask me for tips on learning Lightroom, and one of the best ways is to just start editing. Edit as much as you can. So what I would say is pick a photo, a photo you think would look good in black and white, and open it up and kind of edit that photo in the background while you're watching this video and follow along. It's really, really gonna help a lot. All right, so open up your photo in Lightroom. We're gonna go into the develop module where you can actually make those edits. This is my finished photo and this is it before. This is the raw photo out of the camera. We do all our edits and we're gonna get something that looks like this. And uh, now we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna go to an unedited version and we're gonna start from scratch. Now, the very first thing I do when I'm working with a photo like this is I get rid of any little flaws, any little blemishes, so it's done. I don't have to think about it later. So I'm gonna zoom in just here. We're gonna go pick that uh, heel tool, pick heel, gonna have a bit more feathering there, and we're just gonna go on those spots that we kinda just want to erase. So try to make that as small as you can. Just a few little spots here that we're just gonna kinda take away. I never over retouch someone's skin Blemishes, temporary flaws, I will take those out. But guys, don't be like airbrushing people's face. Skin should look like skin. Skin has just a natural look to it. And I don't, I don't like to basically turn people into like a retouched magazine ad. I don't think that's real, it's not my style. But if you like it, go for it. But I like a much more natural look to my photos, to human faces. So there we go. So before, after, before, after. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do now is I know that this is gonna be a black and white photo edit. Lightroom luckily makes that very, very easy. Over here in the basic panel, we can go black and white or color. We're gonna go black and white. So it does an automatic thing where it turns it black and white. As you can see, there's nothing like, this didn't do a great job, this isn't like, an amazing now black and white photo. There's still a lot we have to do, but that's a good way to start, okay? So, next thing we're gonna move on to is, you can do some work in here, but I actually start in the tone curve because there's a few things that I want about this photo right off the bat to be fixed before we get going. All right, so before I even start in the tone curve, I make a couple points just to anchor everything. So you should go ahead and do that just to start. I have a whole video on using the tone curve. If you need help with that, link it up there. Check it out if you need help. The tone curve is awesome. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring up the dark black points. So see what's happening. I'm getting a bit of a faded look, kind of a film look. So I'm gonna pull that up and just to kind of about there looks great. And then I'm gonna pull those dark points down again because I do really want contrast here. So when I do that, I'm pulling down the blacks, okay? Now the other thing that I want is I actually think some of these white points are very, very blown out. Um, so I'm gonna bring that down. So that means my whitest white is actually gonna be more of a gray. You might not want this look, but I'm going for more of a filmic look with this photo. So that's where you're probably gonna wanna try that out. So bring that down quite a bit. You can definitely add in some other points if you feel like you need it. Okay. And maybe bring that up a little bit more. So there we go. If I turn off the tone curve there, 
turn it back on. You can see what we've done. We've definitely given this a slight matte look. So again, off, on, off, on. Now, some of these white points have gone down too much now, but you're gonna see that we'll bring a lot of that back as we do some further edits. This is kind of just like a starting point. Often in my edits, I jump back and forth. This is where we're gonna start with that tone curve and it looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to this basic panel here. First of all, I think that this is looking a little bit overexposed in some spots, so I'm gonna bring down the exposure. See how that just brought so, that one little thing alone brought a bunch of life back into this photo. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure. I'm gonna bring up the contrast because I did kind of like matte that out. Highlights are gonna come way down, way, way down. So I wanna bring in some more detail in here and here. So yeah, highlights, you coming down, way down. Shadows, I'm gonna move up. Again, quite a bit. So you can kind of see how you make changes in one thing, you have to kind of rectify them in another spot. So shadows coming up. Right, so you're always gonna be jumping around in your edit. Again, now bringing those whites down. Because again, that's like, we're kind of looking like a ghost. <laughs> so we're gonna bring that down. Uh, you just kind of have to play around with it for where exactly. And then the blacks, I'm gonna bring them up. I know some people really never do this. I don't often touch the blacks because sometimes it can really mess up your photo. Um, but here I'm going to, because like I said, I'm going for that kind of more filmic look. So it's kind of okay here. So I don't want it to be, I just want it to kind of have more of that matte filmic look. All right, so after doing the tone curve and the basic edits, this photo is actually at a point now where I'm, I'm really starting to get happy with it. So if I do the before, that's where we were. Now we're here. There's still a lot more to work with this photo, but we're kind of getting into a better place with it. Now the next part I'm gonna go into is the HSL. Now you'll notice that HSL is gone, but it's been replaced with this black and white section. Now you might say, how can you work with colors when you're in black and white? Well, all of the light in your photo, every all those colors, the information about them is still there. So we can play with those colors and it will change how it affects on the photo and how the black and white is mixed into it, okay? This is really important and something that you have to experiment with. So if I go to before, we can see in this photo, there is a lot happening with the oranges, with yellows, we have a lot of those kind of colors in here. So let's go into the mix and see what we can do. The one part in this photo that I think we're still not quite right is her face still seems too, too white to me. It's too bright, it's a bit overexposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down this yellow. And now we can see, we're really, see what's happening? Those are all the kind of more yellowy light points, yellow color points of the image. So I'm bringing that down quite a bit, okay? What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the orange, gonna bring down the red mix, and look at how much more like life and depth and contrast is coming into this photo. Let's see what's happening with the green. Not too much, but there's a bit up in that one corner, so we'll bring that down a little bit. What about the aqua? Sometimes if you don't know if something's in your photo, just go to the extremes. There's really not much happening here. So we'll just kind of leave that guy. Blue, what's up with blue? All right, so blue, there's a lot, just some blue light in her shoulder there. So do I wanna bring it down? Do I wanna bring it up? I'm actually gonna bring it up a little bit just because I want some definition there. All right, what about purple? Again, we have some. This I'm gonna bring down because I don't want too much. And magenta, do we have much of this? Not really. So we'll just bring whatever of it we have down. So it's really important when you're working with your black and white photos that you still work with this color mix and still have an understanding of the colors in your photo. If I went and turn off just the settings we did here, 
this is what we had before. And then now we can really see how much changing those colors just a little bit really affected my photo. So go in, experiment with it, use it a bunch in your photos. You will learn a lot. It's gonna make your black and white photos so, so much better. Check it out. All right, so the last thing, I didn't do anything with split toning, detail, lens correction. You certainly could, but I just, I didn't. Um, I'm gonna go into the effects panel though, and there is some things here with the kind of highlight priority and uh, the grain for a filmic style inspired photo. Definitely you wanna give that grainy vibe, so I'm gonna give it quite a bit of grain. I'm gonna make the size not super big though, because again, I want it to be film style, so not over the top. But I always make my grain super rough, because I'm like, if I'm doing it, might as well like do it up, right? So maybe bring that down a little bit. All right, and now with the post crop vignetting, you can do a lot with your photos here in black and white. So you're just gonna bring down the amount slightly and then I'm gonna change the midpoint, maybe a little bit darker there. So you don't need to do too much here, but a little bit definitely gives it a kind of cool look. All right, so now that I've done tone curve, I've done my black and white mix, I've done the grain, I'm kind of happy with where I'm at. I'm gonna go back to the basic panel here and see if there's any other changes that I feel like this photo needs. I think maybe some of those, the highlights are good. I'm definitely gonna do some thing here with the clarity. I want this to just be like way more of a stronger kind of look. So bringing up that clarity basically solved a lot of my problems. I wasn't sure if I'd have to do something here with the blacks, but you know what? That clarity alone helped. So now I think I've done most of my main kind of edits to this photo. Now I'm gonna go into the local adjustment. So you click on this brush and you can make really targeted changes. So give that a click. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the eyes first thing and up the exposure, shadows, and the clarity on them, just so that they really stick out. You can really overdo this, so make sure you're not. If those little keys that show you where it is bother you, hit the H key and it'll disappear. So probably don't need that as much. That looks way, way better. Super pumped. Before, after, before, after. When I see the before, I kind of feel like I made the exposure too high. Don't go too far with editing eyes. It just looks like it can, it can go so wrong. So just really check that out. I want the eyelashes and like around the eyes to be a bit more um, just stronger, darker. So I'm gonna bring up the contrast, bring down the blacks. And just go around that like that. If you wanna see where you're changing, you can just click that. And you can see that I did not do that very carefully. I'm gonna just whoop, undo that. Hit option and click, and you can kind of erase where it is. So undo, and that's really starting to come through really nicely. Now, one last thing that I do with eyes to make them just stand out a little bit more is see how we have the little bits of uh, white where the light is catching in the eye? That's what makes an eye stand out. So I'm gonna go make a new brush and I'm just gonna put the exposure and the white up on this. Make your little brush super tiny go into the eye and I kind of just go over it. Just some of those spots. Again, be careful with this. Don't overdo it. You gotta zoom out to see how you're doing. But I think I really like that. Maybe we'll do the exposure down and that up a bit. Make sure they kind of are even. Very good, okay. Before, after, before, after. I want this to be more of a focal point, so I'm gonna go in, um, up the contrast, blacks come down, whites go up, and clarity. Whee. Yeah, now that's looking 
really nice. Sometimes certain elements of your photo just need that like brush to just really give them life. And that's one of those elements. Sharpness. Loving it. Okay, so I'm really happy with where this is at right now. This looks really, really great. Uh, we have that nice filmic quality to it all. Maybe bring those that white down a little. Shadows up a bit more. Yes, yes, okay. I'm really, really happy with where this is at. Obviously, I could keep going and there's so many little things and tweaks that I do along the way. The big thing you'll notice with my editing style is I'm always jumping around, going back to the tone curve, changing a few things, back to the basic panel, back to kind of the HSL thing, trying out changing a few things there. So your editing workflow, your process when you're doing a photo is you're always gonna be jumping around and sort of finessing little elements. And it's one of those things that like, I've edited photos and I just keep going and going and like you go back to it and you're like, this could be a bit different, that could be a bit different. But like at a certain point you have to stop. You have to just say like, I'm happy with where this is at go back to it later if you want but like hey if you're anything like me like sometimes I will edit one photo for so long look at it the next day and be like I hate everything I did so you know what it's just about practicing it's about experience trying new things and going and sometimes doing a style you don't do so if you don't do black and white photos you know go ahead and give one an edit give it a try because you do learn more about everything black and white is a great way to learn about how the tone curve works, how it affects your photos, how color mix works. All of those things affect light and contrast and black and white is such a great place to learn that. There you have it. That's exactly how I edited this photo and how I edit a lot of my black and white photos. As always, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment. I post these videos every single Monday and we talk about easy ways to edit great photos. All right guys, until next time, peace out.